Welcome to Life Astrologer with me, Anna Isabel. I am a, an astrologer, a psychological astrologer. And with me today, I am delighted to have a past life regressionist, um, Steve Burgess. Steve, welcome to Life Astrologer. Hi, Anna. Thanks for having me. I appreciate uh -huh. it. Thank you. So I've been looking at your chart and I've been looking for pointers to an interest in reincarnation and okay. past therapy. And oh my goodness, it's full of it. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so firstly, um, I can see the that you have is in the sign of Pisces. And with Mars in the sign of Pisces, um, it's Pisces is a sign that we associate with all things mystical. Oh, okay. so and spirituality. So it's about wanting to delve deep into the mysteries of life. Mm. Yes, and I think when you have Mars in that sign, Mars is about where we, we put our energy. Mm -hmm. and think about Mars putting its energy in that area of life. It's also a sign that's very linked with healing. Ah, okay. Yes. So it's a, a very important aspect of Pisces. And of course, that is what you do. Interestingly, it's also a sign that we associate with hypnosis. Oh, okay. <laughs> <That's> so, <spooky. laughs> yeah. So it's it's the sign that we associate with um, altered states of consciousness, if we like. Yes. Um, if you, and and hypnosis is a, a state of altered consciousness. Just. So, so to speak, um, yes. because we are going into the subconscious through a, a very relaxed state. It's not, it's not sleep, and yet it's akin to dreaming because we're using you know, the subconscious, the imagination, and both areas, whether it's dreams or are also the realm of Pisces. Okay. So, so that's um, so that's that, the first. Well, that really fits because I, I mean I have almost two strands in my life. One is my work head when I'm working with clients, and you know, so much of my work is regression, taking the clients back into previous lives or ancestors' lives. So, uh, you know, 29 years of doing this, I'm sort of, a, a, it's it's just in me. I'm just coloured with regression and with hypnosis, really. If you cut me, you'd read hypnotherapy all the way through, I think. Um, so, and it's almost as if... Um, 29 years ago, I fell into it by accident, but came into something that felt very meaningful. And it was like coming home uh, when I became a hypnotherapist. It was like coming into something which just fitted me like a glove. Um, so that's sort of, that's one aspect of that. And then the other aspect is the spiritual aspect. And I, I've been on a spiritual sort of journey since I was about 14, really, uh, and heavily involved in sort of spiritual matters. Um not from a religious point of view, but from a, um, a transcendent point of view, you know, finding transcendence in some way and trying to make sense of this asylum type life that we live here on earth um, through, you know, an understanding of sort of spiritual processes. So for, the, for you to pick that up straight away is absolutely both things are definitely uh, core essences in me, if you like. Well, there's so much here as well, because your rising sign is Sagittarius. And this is uh, about a search for meaning. Oh, and yes. <laughs> so, Sag That's so Pisces and Sagittarius, you, you can't escape it. You also have your North Node in Sagittarius. And the North Node pertains to, um, to karma. And, well, let's just say the soul's purpose, the soul's history. It's the soul life, if, another way of putting it. 
Um, and with Sagittarius, it, it indicates someone whose soul path is finding meaning. Mm. So that's... Yes. But, and it comes early because this is a Sagittarius ascendant and the ascendant is about childhood. So there's something here about your childhood that leads you in that direction. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because I think as a child, I was always extremely sensitive. And I think that sensitivity led me to um, be very aware of people's suffering at an early age. And I've always been aware of people's suffering. And um, so I think it was, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have a terrible childhood, but obviously, you know, we've all got childhood baggage. Um, but uh, certainly that sensitivity as a child, I think, has, again, led me into this way of being without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. It's it's wanting to find out why. <laughs> yes. Why this yes. Way and that's very much um, Pisces and and Sagittarius. Okay. Yes. It does make a lot of sense because you know my um, raison d'être, but there's a big part of me that is searching, um, searching for answers, searching for the truth. I often talk about the truth. I often say I want the truth. Um, you know, that's what I'm looking for with a capital T. And, um, you know, it's it's not an obsession, but it's definitely a part of me that spurs me on and, you know, uh, makes me focus. I sound like some sort of weird or bearded hippie, but makes me focus certainly on spiritual matters because I think as we are we're human beings, but we are spiritual beings in a human frame, uh, and that's my sort of outlook on life really. And if we're able to transcend the human and find our spiritual essence, then I think we really do start to make sense of life. Um, and most people haven't, are not doing that. They're just living a, almost an animalistic life, um, which is almost sort of wasting the life that we've got. Yes, I, I understand. Saturn is your 12th house along with this uh, north node and the 12th house and you talked about ancestral history and and the 12th house is the house that i would look to for understanding ancestral issues and, and so there it's you know you've got two planets there it's also interestingly enough the house that talks about the pre-birth story so the time in in the womb so if i want to understand what that time was like for my client to see to to know whether any of the things that I'm hearing are coming from the womb. I would look at the twelfth house. So it's those. It's that pre-birth period. So it's everything pre-birth, but reaching back um, in terms of uh, ancestral history as well. Yes. Yes. It, it's not just the first. You know, the last two or three generations. It's going back, and mm. and that the area so it's high and and you've got saturn and scorpio there which wants to get to the bottom of things okay yes it's the ability to look at the darkest aspects of human behavior human experience the, the most extreme aspects and saturn and scorpio you don't have a choice you've got to look <laughs> it's, you know you <laughs> <clears throat> you have to look and you have to look deep. So yes. again, it's not surprising that you do this work. Yes, yes, yes. And and, and as you know, uh, you know, doing regression type work is about uncovering, is about looking at deep things for deep things. And, um, you know, it's the work that inspires me more than anything else. I mean, I, you know, over the years I've, I've you know, I use NLP, I do EFT and other therapies, but the most important therapy for me as a therapist is regression because it's about looking for the answers, looking for the truth, digging down and looking into the, the dark side of things, especially for clients as well as myself. I mean, you know, I'm, I have therapy and, and regression therapy is very important for me to heal my woundedness and my 
emotional baggage from the past. So I think it's so important to go digging down and not being scared of the dark side and not being scared of the the shitty stuff that's under the surface that um, some therapists don't like to go near. For me, that's the key to everything. If you can unlock and dig out the crap, then we get better. And it's as simple as that. If you don't do that, there is very limited healing and yes. putting a, a plaster on on the wound, you're not actually healing it. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm completely with you on, on this. Um, yes. and, and the love, you can hear the love of what you do and what you're saying. And I'm looking at Venus in the eighth house, which is more of that um, Scorpio stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really looking at the depth of the psyche and, yes. and sitting there loving it. I think there's a creative element to what you do too, um, because you have Venus in Leo, which is a very creative sign sitting in that house. So I, I think that you as a therapist are somebody who is very creative in what you do. Mm, yes, yeah. Uh, although um, the regression technique that I use can be very structured, you've got to be so flexible within the structure. And um, I've actually reached a stage, I think, in my career after 29 years where that creativeness just it just comes naturally without me even have to, I don't even have to think about things anymore. Stuff just comes in. It's as if my intuition is sort of tuned in with the client. And although I don't take over sessions, I don't like to, you know, for me, the subconscious does the work and I facilitate that. But there are times when as a therapist, we have to just be a little bit involved and move things along for clients based on experience. And so I think that creative side is is definitely there. And of course, the creative side brought me to write I've had two books published so far. Uh, and I've written a third one, which I'm looking for a publisher for. So that creative side is just in me. Yeah, it, there's no question. I think it's like you say, there's the structure, but the structure alone is like by numbers. Mm. And you have to be able to move within it by tuning in what the client needs. And, and also to get them unstuck sometimes, to, you know, as you say, to move things along. There, there are times when people can get stuck and you're sitting there thinking, uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then suddenly there's a, a bit of inspiration that lights yes. up. We don't even think about it. It just happens. Yes. Um, so, yes, the, that, that creativity is huge. Yes. Yeah, very much so. You know, I mean, as you possibly, as you probably know, possibly know, when especially within the hypnotherapy profession, you have hypnotherapists who are trained to do basic therapy, where they just sit and read scripts at clients, and then you've got therapists like you and I who are into working on the into the stuff, the stuff that's causing the problem. And it, it's like two separate strands, and we've got pretty therapy, or we've got get in there and do the work. And um, that, for me, is much more creative than just sitting there reading a script to a client. That's right. It, it, it's, it's very joyous. Um, I actually can't imagine um, working with a script because there are, you know, the client's not read the script. Their subconscious has not read the script. No. And things things happen (laughs) things and um and you have to be prepared to be flexible totally totally the client goes off script and when the client goes off script if you're not flexible you're stuffed (laughs) um so yeah well steve it's it's a a real pleasure to to have a look at your chart and so thank you so um, for being my astrologer today. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. I can't believe what you've brought through this. It just is, you know, so much of what you've said is is Burgess. And uh, so that's tremendous. Thank you so much for opening that up. I really appreciate it. The absolute pleasure. And if people wanted to get a hold of you, how could they do that? 
Uh, usually the best way is through my website. Uh, I have two websites, but the easiest one is lionheart-training.com, lionheart-training.com. And, um, you know, that's either to look at my books or to ask me about hypnotherapy sessions because I do everything online nowadays. Interesting that you should say Lionheart um, because you do have Venus and Leo. So yes. I wonder about the origin of Lionheart. Well, there's, there's a few things there. I mean, certainly as a, as a human being, I try to live my life with as much kindness and as much love as possible. And, um, you know, for a number of years, I was a practicing Buddhist, so I was very heavily involved in the concept of, with compassion. And it sort of falls into the, the job as being a therapist, so being open-hearted with clients. But one of the main reasons I called my training uh, organization Lionheart was because I believe as therapists, we have to be lion-hearted. We have to sit day after day and listen to sometimes the most horrific stories that anybody could have to listen to. Because, you know, as you know, some clients really come with some awful backgrounds, and we have to listen to that and want to help the client and come back day after day. I think that needs you to be lion-hearted uh, as a therapist, but within that to work with your heart as well. So that's all part of that ethos. And there you have summed up the ethos of Leo to be and warm and to be heart driven. Um, so there is your Venus Leo in the eighth house. You've actually got <laughs> quite my heart. I love it. That's great. <laughs> That's the core of it. <laughs> yeah. So now um, Steve's book is The Power of Past Life Regression. And I will put a link to his website and to his book on the description box. And so you'll be able to, to get it easily. You'll also find my own website uh, on there so that you can find out about talks and workshops that I'm doing about astrology. In the meantime, do subscribe, do share, and see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>